Morning, welcome to Sew and Be Unpicked with me, Jane from Haberdasher Do. So we're on week five, <coughs> which is children's week, and uh, we're getting through the sewers now. <laughs> uh, so children's week, they had to make a romper suit uh, in the um, technical challenge. Is it called a technical challenge? Oh my God, I can't remember. Um, and then they had to do a fancy dress sea themed costume in the transformation challenge and then the made to measure was a child's raincoat uh so uh first of all romper suit uh which is really cute uh they've actually made this pattern available so if you go to um the great british sewing bee website i've also shared it on my facebook page and i'll put it on uh, in a link below this um you can download the pattern so you get 20 pages of pattern and instructions it's actually a fairly straightforward pattern it's a couple of large pieces like this um, I've actually folded them in half because they've done them as whole pieces um, but I folded them in half and cut them on the fold uh, and then the, the bib so it's, um, it's quite an easy pattern I've actually made it up as well I timed myself so the contestants had four hours uh, to make this which I thought was quite a long time uh, in sewing bee terms because normally they don't give them quite enough time so I timed myself and I'm not a fast sewer by any stretch of the imagination and I did it in three and a half hours and that included uh, pinning and cutting out um, and I also did a couple of uh, practice buttonholes and practice snaps so this is baby Dave who normally sits in our window say hello baby Dave so um, I've made it out of a jersey um, so none of the contestants chose a jersey fabric um, this one's uh, got a bit of stretch. It's quite a stable jersey, so it's not too bad to um, uh, work with. Um, so I think if I'd chosen a cotton poplin or something, I would have made it even quicker because uh, I had to, you know, just take my time with this one. So it was quite an easy, quite an easy, straightforward make. Um, you've got uh, the straps to turn the right way round. Uh, you've got the elastic casing to put through the back and the thing was they wanted the casing um, below the top edge to create this kind of frill effect. You've got but two buttonholes on the straps um, and then the buttons inside and then the dreaded poppers on the crutch. Okay, so I used um, just some hemline, hemline uh, plastic snaps. Um, you need, do need a special tool for it. Voila, it's the first time I've ever used it. It was really easy to use. Um, the tool is quite expensive, so if there's anybody local to me who wants to borrow it, you're more than welcome. Okay. Uh, uh, so say bye-bye, Dave. Bye. -bye, <laughs> right, so um, pattern-wise, I found a couple of patterns. Oh, put that in the wrong file. So from the McCall's range, because uh, that's what we do, uh, is this one. So you will see there is a yeah a romper suit here. So it's almost identical to this one. The only difference is that the legs are longer. Okay, so it even has the crossover back. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, it is. God, where is it? It's that one there. <laughs> So it has the crossover straps as well. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, there was this one, which was similar design, but more of a structured bodice with little cap sleeves, which I thought was very sweet. And you've got uh, different options in that. You can make a this little crossover effect skirt um, if you want to. And then this one was a christening version so down here you'll see it's it's a little romper suit but it's got a more formal uh, top section with uh, this one has even got a little collar and a bow but you can adapt those but they're all very much the same principle so there's those three patterns uh, fabric wise um, most of the contestants chose a cotton uh, Adam chose a lightweight denim uh, which was his downfall because it turned out to be too thick to get the hoppers through. Um, I chose a jersey. Um, this is one of our uh, sort of kiddie jerseys uh, that we have. 
it's really nice to work with it's a cotton mix um, we've also got it in a stripe so those are fairly unisex I think or gender neutral whichever way you want to look at it um, and then if you wanted to go for a cotton or a wo woven fabric um, you can spoil for choice really we've got loads of cotton poplins I've just picked out a few we've got dinosaurs we've got toucans we've got one of my favorites the little busy bees in yellow uh, we've also got the busy bees in uh, like a sagey green pale sagey green um, we've got jellyfish uh, cupcakes we've got little ditzy florals we've got blue we've got that in pink as well I mean this is just a handful we've got loads um, space rockets uh, little patchwork number we've got that in blue as well if there's any Harry Potter fans out there <laughs> could have a little Harry Potter one we've got little dogs or little upside down dogs there we go right way up and uh, that's like on a dark grey background oh if you're feeling a bit fun you've got camper vans so any any cotton poplin or, or a nice stable jersey would uh, sort you out um so there were a few basic errors i think um i think um adina put the bib on the wrong way around so she had to take that off and do that again um Damien put his elastic channel in the wrong place and I think Raf did as well um, and obviously Adam's poppers uh, there were a couple of little technical challenges with it you had to stitch in the ditch uh, which is uh, where you have to stitch from the right side along this uh, seam where the gathers meet the, the bodice but you have to make sure excuse me Dave that you catch the bib on the inside and the, the trick is you want to stitch in the ditch here so the stitching doesn't show and hopefully <laughs> I have achieved that uh, so that was that little technical bit uh, bagging out the bib um, they've finished the edges the side seams strangely but the bib comes right down to the side seam so I suppose that was the neatest way of doing it and then um, the poppers on the crutch area and actually putting the facing on was quite tricky because you're we're dealing with tiny little arches um, and, and small seam allowances so, so for children's clothes the seam allowance is usually about one centimeter well not about one centimeter it is one centimeter so uh, you're working with much smaller spaces so it is a bit more fiddly and you just have to go a bit slow and take your time um cutting out you just see some of the sewers having real problems cutting out um but i actually folded the pattern piece in half and then placed it on the fold so it was far easier to cut out um where the crutch is <laughs> if i show you the pattern piece so trying to cut out that little um shape there accurately if you I placed this edge on the fold and then I just had to cut out that side um, and I did the same for the front as well um, pattern placement you wanted to be careful what you placed on the center of your bib here um, I've got the giraffe in the middle um, uh, Fari had um, the bold pattern from her African wax print in the middle Raf did something with pattern matching I can't remember what now uh, Rebecca made sure her dinosaur was right there so if you've got a big bold print like that make sure you put something right in the middle otherwise it's going to look a bit odd okay those are a bit big for Dave aren't they um what else do we have to say um yeah most people sewed it really well uh Adam had a bit of a mare with his poppers and he made hard work for himself by choosing three different fabrics so uh, there we go that was the beginning of his bad day I think uh, the transformation challenge was um, using wetsuits and swimming aids to make a fancy dress costume um, there were some quite ingenious things here uh, Andrew's crab was pretty cool I really liked Rebecca's octopus because uh, it had it had a bit of sewing in it as well so she'd made the tentacles and then she'd sewn fringing on and um, yeah that looked really cool 
uh, the jellyfish was, yeah, okay, and the mermaids, some of them were better than others, weren't they? Uh, anyway, that's about all I'm going to say about that. Uh, except that we do have a lot of lurex and shiny fabrics if you ever wanted to make yourself a mermaid or uh, a jellyfish or an octopus. And loads and loads of fringing. Okay. Right. Raincoat. Child's raincoat. Ah, oh, tea. Uh, right, so they had to use a more technical fabric, uh, like a, a waterproof fabric, um, and I think depending on what fabric you chose, depended on how well you did. So Adam used um, PUL, polyurethane laminate, which is used for um, nappy wraps. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Uh, so if you're using... Um, uh, toweling diapers or nappies then uh, you put a, um, a PU, PUL um, oh my god my words have failed me um, pull on pants over the top there we go uh, so it's quite a rubbery texture um, so if you make a mistake you can't really unpick it because it's just going to leave holes but that's kind of true for a lot of the fabrics that the, the sewers used it seemed to me that not all of them had practiced making this or practiced using this fabric or using their fabrics uh, which I think if I was going into it I'd surely will have a little practice first but there we go um, so they had to make a raincoat they've already made one coat in men's week a couple of weeks ago so I thought it's quite odd to choose another coat because it's similar kind of skills um, anyway I found a couple of patterns in the McCall's range there wasn't a lot I have to confess um, so this one came up before in Men's Week. Um, it's more of a, sh a shirt style coat, but you could make it more raincoaty if you use the right fabric. Um, and then I found um, a girl's cape, um, which you could make out of a fleece or a lightweight uh, waterproof fabric. And the only other kids coat I found was this kind of bomber jackety one um, which wouldn't really work in a waterproof fabric but it would work in a fleece or it might work in a soft waterproof fabric um, fabric wise uh, we've got some we've got ripstock in a camo navy camo and a plain navy we also have uh, this is a it's called Riviera waterproof fabric as you can see it's quite fluid Okay, um, and it has a waterproof backing, that's the shiny side. This side looks quite sort of cottony and matte, so it doesn't look, that's my phone going, sorry, um, it doesn't look plastic. Um, it's really nice to so sew, just so it's like normal fabric. Um, and we've got that in that kind of cameo blue, and we've also got it in a slate grey. They're nine pounds a metre, they're wide, 150 wide. Okay. Um, so Adam had a mare, didn't he? Um, he didn't finish. It was wasn't the simplest of patterns. It had that kind of yoke at the back, um, and the, his hem wasn't level. There was all sorts wrong with it. Adina's wasn't a lot better. Um, had that panel down the front. Um, Andrew's reversible one was really lovely, really well made, but no one seemed to pick up on the fact that it was too small for the model. It was really short on the kid. Um, yeah, um, Damien's uh, shower curtain one was interesting. Uh, did kind of st hem did kind of stick out a bit. Um, Fairy's unicorn rainbow was lovely, really lovely. Um, uh, what else was there? Oh, Rebecca's, um, was it Rebecca's or Serena's? Um, she had contrast sleeves, but the, she made the lining too short, so it pulled, pulled the hem out. Um, so there we go. That's it, really, for this week. Uh, if you need any of the fabrics, just give us a call. Um, I'll put some links uh, below as well with uh, links to the patterns, and if I can, links to the fabrics as well. All right, bye. Oh, can't stop the...